Oh, trust me. I have, I, I definitely thought about it and we talked about it with the production designer and we have all the tubes, but we were like, we shouldn't draw our eye to this facet of it because we're trying to focus on the emotion on the face. So the first part is when I was watching this, I was sort of wondering, how does the staying suspended forever work? Like, does someone feed him through a tube? Is he going to the bath? Does he never go to the bathroom again? That is a, a very good question that um, uh, uh, I, I have not had to answer thus far. <laughs> and, you know, for me, the, the uh, liquids that the people are in are, you know, nurturing for the skin and the exterior body. But then, yeah, they'd have to be fed through a tube and all sorts of uh, nitty gritty that I chose to not focus on <laughs> for the film itself. We had a lot of tubes coming out of the um, machine, but I figured let's not dwell on that aspect of it. It somewhat ruins the romance of it all. It's totally fine. I, 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 I understand that. I think it's just interesting because sometimes when you talk to creators, it'll be something that didn't make the movie, but they're like, oh no, I totally have the backstory for that. Like, or even people that, have, that are acting in the movie. Oh, trust me, I have, I, I definitely thought about it and we talked about it with the production designer and we have all the tubes, but we were like, we shouldn't draw our eye to this facet of it because we're trying to focus on the emotion on the face. So we kind of went through intellectually the exercise of how it would work, you know, and it, it would basically be like how we pe keep people in comas alive or something, right? You'd have yeah. to really, um, uh, help them regulate their bodily functions. Um, and the tank itself is supposed to be a little bit like a sensory deprivation tank uh, in, in terms of its viscosity. But, uh, but yeah, that, that didn't make it into much detail in the film itself. <laughs> I mean, it makes a lot of sense because you'd need to float. So you have to have salt or some sort of uh -huh. other nutrients in there. So exactly, there <laughs> exactly. But you wouldn't um, want to dry out either. So it's, you know, tricky <laughs> So there's also a mention, you know, we see these the cities overrun by water and there's a mention of like wars that have happened and of certain places that are inhabited, that are uninhabitable now. Um, beyond Miami, are there other cities in your mind that are that are totally effed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I I I don't know that it's just in my mind, it's now in the headlines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but I'm going to avoid thinking they're totally effed because I, like, um, I guess Watts, you know, believe you have to soldier on. And when you're confronting a problem, you have to face it head on and figure out how to deal with it. There are still ways that we can mitigate the risks of climate change. And uh, the first step is acknowledging we have a problem. So the, the movie acknowledges it. It's just part of the central premise. And there's not really, it's not the point of the movie because I just take for granted that it's happening because it is happening. Yeah. And maybe people actually seeing what it would look like and the reality of it will make people go like, oh, wait, 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 you know, people that already should be, frankly. Exactly. I mean, the, the set design that we did that my amazing production designer built for the, the barricades that they made for uh, siloing off parts of the city from the waves. The New York Times had a headline about a month ago where Miami is building those very barricades, you know, and, and they look quite similar to our production design. So it's one of those things where uh, it's not science fiction. It's just science fact, unfortunately, right now. <laughs>